Hey everyone, my name is Asta Chauhan. Welcome to the Tutorials Point. In the previous video, we have learned about reinforcement learning. And in this particular video, we are going to learn about Q learning. So let's see what's in for you in this video. We are going to look at what is Q learning. After that, we will see some important terms related to Q learning. After that, Bellman's equation. And then what are the steps in Q learning? And at the end, we are going to understand the whole process using an example. So let's see what is Q learning. Q learning is a model free of policy reinforcement learning algorithm that finds the next best action given a current state. It chooses this action at random and aims to maximize the reward. Here you can see this standard reinforcement learning graph. If you have watched our previous video that is of reinforcement learning, you must be familiar with this. So where you have an agent and agent takes some action and action affects the environment and then environment sends back the feedback or the reward and state is the new state where the agent lies, maybe on the chessboard or some position at a game. Here the term of policy refers to the methods where the learning agent can learn through the actions which are outside the current policy. This means that the agent can learn about the optimal policy regardless of the actions taken by the behavior policy. So now let's consider an ad recommendation system. Usually when you look up a product online, you get ads which will suggest same product over and over again. Using Q learning, we can make an ad recommendation system which will suggest related products to our previous purchase. The reward will be if user clicks on the suggested product. And again, you can see here you might have lots of products on your web advertisement or on your page, but it is still not a float number. It is still a set number and that is something to be aware of while using or when you are using Q learning. And you can see here if you have 100 of people clicking on ads and you clicked one of the ads, it might go in there and say, okay, this person clicked on this particular ad. What are the best set of ads based on the clicking on this ad and afterwards based on where they are browsing? So let's go ahead and look at some important terms when we are talking about Q learning. We have state. The state represents the current position of an agent in an environment. Action. The action is the step taken by the agent when it is in a particular state. Rewards. For every action, the agent will get a positive or negative reward. Episodes. When an agent ends up in a terminating state and can't take a new action. Maybe in a game, some character died. So that will be a whole episode. Okay, next is Q values. Q values are used to determine how good an action A taken at a particular state S. And it is represented as Q A comma S. Next is temporal difference. A formula used to find the Q value by using the value of current state and action and the previous state and action. Now let's look at the Bellman's equation. Bellman equation is used to determine the value of a particular state and deduce how good it is to be in that state. The optimal state will give us the highest optimal value. There are three parts in Bellman equation. First one is maximum function or max function which selects the action that maximizes the rewards, max A, okay? Next is discount factor that is represented by gamma and its values lie between 0 and 1, representing the importance of the future reward. Next is the function that computes the reward based on the selected action and the current state, and that is represented as R S comma A. So the maximum function is here, R S comma A is our reward, instantaneous reward we are getting and gamma is our discount factor and Q S prime and A prime are representing the Q value for the next state. So the whole Bellman's equations looks like this. 
Now, let's see what are the steps that we take to prepare a Q value table. Here we are taking example of that dog who can fetch, run, or sit. Okay, so first step is create an initial Q table in which we are going to initialize all the values to zero. Here we have some actions like fetching, sitting, running, and some states like a start, idle, wrong action, correct action, and end. Okay, so next is choose an action and perform it. Update values in the table. Here we have to note something that every action has some attached reward. So using that reward, we are going to calculate the Q value. So next step obviously is get the value of the reward and calculate the value Q value using Bellman equation and update that value in the Q value table. And we will continue the same until the table is filled or an episode ends. Now here we have the final Q value table and we will use these Q values or Q value table to trace the best optimal path. Now let's understand the whole process with an example to understand it better. But before that, I have a quiz for you all. And the question is, which of the following is a key feature of Q learning? And the options are, it requires a model of the environment. Next is, it is a type of supervised learning. And third option is, it is an off-policy algorithm. And the final option is, it cannot handle continuous state process. If you know the answer, write down in the comment section. So now let's move to the example through which we are going to understand the whole process better. Suppose we have five rooms in a building connected by doors as shown in this figure. We will number each room from 0 to 4 and the outside of the building can be thought of as one big room and we will number that as 5. Okay. So notice that door 1 and 5 leads to the building that is room 5. So here what we are going to do is we are going to consider these doors as action and these rooms as a state. We can represent the room on the graph each room as nod or state and each door as a link or action. So this particular map can be represented as this graph. And notice that here we have room 5 as the goal state. That means we have to get into the room 5. So the goal room is 5. The doors that leads immediately to the goal have an instant reward of 100. Other doors not directly connected to the target have 0 reward. Each arrow contains an instant reward values as shown in this graph. We can put the state diagram and the instant reward values into the following matrix that is R. Uh, the minus ones in the table represent null values that is where there isn't a link between nodes. That means that we can't take any action between those rooms. For example, 0 and 1. Here 0 and 1 have minus 1 value. That means we can't move directly from room 0 to room 1 okay so all the minus 1 values in this matrix represent null values zeros are the rooms that are not directly connected to the goal state that is 5 and 100 is the value that is directly connected to the goal state that is 5 now before starting we need some initialized value so here we have discount factor is equals to 0 0.8 and the initial state let us consider as room 1 and we will going to initialize matrix Q as 0 matrix. Okay, so initially we have all the Q values initialized to 0 as represented here in this matrix Q. So now look at the second row that is one of the matrix R. There are two possible actions here that we can take. First one, 1 to 3rd and second one is 1 to 5. So let us consider that we are moving from state 1 to 5. That means we are taking action 5. Now let's imagine what would happen if our agent is in the state 5, that is the next state. 
if our agent is in the state 5, it can move to 1 or 4 or 5. That means we have three possible actions here. So using updated Q learning rule derived from the Bellman's equation, we have Q state comma action is equals to R state comma action plus comma that is R discount factor maximum of Q next state and all the possible actions. So we get Q 1 comma 5 that is the Q value for the current state and action we are calculating R 1 comma 5 reward for the current state and action 0 0.8 that is our discount factor multiplied by maximum of the Q values for the next state and all the possible actions. So here we have reward for 1 comma 5 is 100. So we will put 100 here plus 0 0.8 multiply by maximum of all the Q values. Here we have all the values 0. So maximum of 0 is 0 and multiply by 0 0.8 is 0. So we are getting Q 1 comma 5 is equals to 100. So we will take this value in the Q value table. Now the next state 5 now becomes the current state because 5 is the goal state so we have finished one episode. Our agent's brain now contains an updated matrix Q as this. For the next episode we randomly choose the initial state let's say 3. So from 3 we can go to 1, 2, or 4. So now we are assuming that we are moving from state 3 to state 1. So now we imagine that we are in the state 1. So from state 1 we have possible actions 3 and 5. That means we can move from state 1 to state 3 and state 5. Again we compute the Q value using the same equation. We have Q3, 1 is equals to R3, 1 plus 0 0.8. That is our discount factor. Maximum of all the Q values for the next state and for all the actions. So R3, 1. R3, 1. We have 0. So we will put 0 here plus 0 0.8 multiply by maximum of Q values. We have 0 and 100. And maximum of 0 and 100 is 100. So 0 plus 0 0.8 multiplied by 100 comes out 80. So we will update this Q value of 3 comma A to the Q value table and it will turns out like this. So if our agent learns more through further episodes, it will finally reach convergence values in matrix Q like this. And finally, using this Q table, we can trace the best optimal path. And you know what? Tracing the best sequence of the state is as simple as following the links with the highest values at each state. So let us consider initially we are at state 2. So let's see what is the best Q value for state 2. For state 2, we have best value that is 64 for action 3. So from 2, we are going to move to the 3. Now let's see for state 3, what is the best Q value? And for 3, we, ha we have two best Q values. That is 80 for 1 and another one is also 80 for 4. So from 3, we can move to 1 and 4. Let's see for 1, we have best value 100. That means we can move from 1 to 5. And that means that we have reached our goal state and one episode and here and for four we have best value for five so that means we can move from four to five again we have reached our goal state i hope this video helped you to understand the q learning algorithm and this is not it after this we are going to cover deep q network and policy gradient and one thing more, before this video, we have already covered the supervised machine learning algorithms and unsupervised machine learning algorithms. So stay tuned for further informative videos. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.